Welcome viewers to this video. This is your local host of this domain, John Richard Klein, the Cassette Master. The YouTuber CPU Tests had requested that I make a video showing the inside of the MLR7A or Reporter 7A Hungarian made cassette tape recorder. So in this video we will be taking a peek inside of the unit. Here is the ML R7A recorder and we'll be taking some things off of this unit. Here displayed is the introductory of the inside of the ML R7A cassette tape recorder. You can see in this area is where the 6D cells are located. <clears throat> Let's take some looks inside this unit. You can see there are a number of metal mechanics inside, which is good, but downside here <gasps> don't fall. The downside is that the main chassis of the transport mechanism is actually made out of plastic. Even these levers here that get pushed by the buttons are plastic. Now that, for a professional grade cassette recorder, they could have done better than that. This must have something that detects the machine being open because it's chirping at me when I try to play. Let's try putting a tape in. Yeah. It's not happy. It must detect the machine being open. Let's see if that's the case or if I've just revived Murphy. It detects. Or does it? It's playing now. So, let's take some more looks inside this unit. One interesting thing to notice is that the heads, when they go down to their neutral position, are actually at an angle instead of like that. But when I push it up to the mechanism, the transport, it goes nice and flush. It's just the way this unit is designed. You can see that most of the drive mechanism is actually plastic. The rewind and the or the, the supply spool and the take-up spool are both driven with plastic gears. There's the fast forward. There is a rewind, and there is a playback. <gasps> Don't fall! My goal is not to scratch this thing. With the clutch mechanism, counter belt is on the take-up reel. Reel, for lack of a better term, spool. Another interesting thing to notice is the motor. This motor is not a Hungarian item, or European at all for that matter. It's made by Mabuchi. It looks to be a Japanese motor, no doubt. 
What's neat to see is the speed control circuitry right next to the motor. The speed control circuitry is definitely European made. There is a little bit slightly better-ish view of the little speed control circuit board. You can also notice this handwritten part on the sticker here on the side of the plastic chassis of the transport mechanism. Why they had to opt for a plastic main chassis for the transport mechanism on a professional reporting machine is beyond me. To be fair, even some Marantz slash Superscope cassette tape recorders such as the Marantz PMD220 used a plastic transport mechanism chassis and had parts that tended to break on those Marantz slash Superscope machines. Yet they were aimed at the professional market as well and why they use plastic when it's a pro machine is just a silly idea. One interesting thing to note is this lead weight and this lead weight goes like this. Watch. Let's look in the back. Here is the nice Hungarian circuit board. Oh. Looks like there may have been another model at some point. I had a switch here. With traces on the other side of the board. That's a curiosity. Oh yeah, I remember I remember reading online there was actually a version of this that could do pilot tones for synchronization with film. I bet that's what that switch was for. The screws have been loosened. Behold the beautiful insides. You can see indeed this is a dual flywheel machine. But adding to the beauty of it is a stroboscope lines on the flywheel to be able to ascertain a precise speed setting with a stroboscope on the main capstan flywheel. Then there's the backup flywheel to help speed stability when the machine is being moved around while it's running. And it's also nice that there's no um, there's no covers going on top of the uh, flywheels, which means belt replacement should be pretty easy. But amazingly enough, the original belt in this machine is in incredibly good shape for its age. It doesn't even look like it's loose. Here's a good shot of the board. Plenty of trimmers exist on this board for adjustments and a number of transistors, including one integrated circuit. You can see it has that funny style of leads flaring out either which way, which is sometimes seen on the really old um, chips, amplifier chips and so forth. It's a TBA 820, probably just an audio amplifier for the speaker. Oh gosh, I'm not even showing it anymore. I start looking at the thing in real life and I put I do this with a camera. Boom! Hey, I'm not using the tripod right now, I know. But anyway, it's a pretty beautiful spectacle to behold. Anyway, it might be good di good time now to check for any leaky capacitors because there are quite a few electrolytics on this board and chances are some of them are going to need to be replaced because the amplifier doesn't seem to be quite as loud as I think it should be and it doesn't seem to get as sensitive to sound as I think it should get so probably need some uh, new caps also you can see several of these inductors and you might think oh is one of them the bias oscillator coil? No, bias oscillator is on a separate circuit board down here 
Here's some old uh, Tesla capacitors, one microfarad. I did find some pretty leaky capacitors, so I went ahead and replaced these four leaky one microfarad uh, Tesla capacitors. These are going to be Czechoslovakian capacitors. And um, you can see I got some new capacitors, these one microfarads here, and that one there, and that one down there replaced and also um I was like going to point out I thought something had caught my eye. Um I mean, it's really a pretty circuit board to say the least. It's really pretty. And um anyway quite something to say the least. Oh, I remember now. There's very early surface mount parts. Now this recorder is from I think 1979, 1980 around there. There's a surface mount. Probably a capacitor, maybe a resistor. Probably a capacitor there. And a couple more right here. Those were surface mount parts. Early surface mount parts. Quite interesting. After an adventure, taking the machine back apart to undo a short from a resistor lead touching a metal post. The machine is back and operating again with some replaced electrolytics. And I can make a recording. Boom! Wait, so take off automatic. Hello! This is a recording on the whatchamacallit. Boom! Let's see how this comes out. Today's date is the 21st of July 2018. Speaker monitor and hello. This is a recording on the what's it called? Boom. Let's see how this comes out. Today's date is the 21st of July 2018. On a side note, for any interested parties out there, an unrelated note that is, some of you people might remember the voice of music 760 reel to reel tape recorder. I made a video of this model, I think back in the year 2012, for my official presentation. Although this machine has made an appearance on a couple of other videos from 2011 as well. I got this unit in 2011 from John Clark. And for a long time, I didn't use it very often because the nickel metal hydride battery pack that I made for it was, pe was a piece of crap. Well this recorder I have since upgraded to lithium ion cells. I run the machine off two 18650 size 3.7 volt lithium ion cells and it needs special charging circuitry to be constant current first and once the voltage of the cell reaches the target voltage of 4.1 or 4.2 volts constant voltage until the current asymptotes close to zero. Once the current is at zero or asymptoted to zero, the battery is charged. I have two 18650 cells in this unit with a charging circuit that I have found the schematic for off the website of the YouTuber Diode Gone Wild using an LM317 voltage regulator, a transistor and a few other components to create a constant current slash constant voltage charging circuit and I modified the wiring the charging circuitry in this recorder and included the special charging circuit for safely charging of lithium ion cells and now constructed and installed in order to charge my unfortunately unbalanced lithium ion cells there's two times fuse protection inside if the cells were to be shorted cells, the fuse should blow this machine will now be able to be charged with the built-in circuitry and used in a good way running off of 18650 lithium ion cells 
conversion performed on the 21st of July or completed on the 21st of July 2018 AD. The machine is now one that can be used on a regular basis and won't have the annoying problem I had before where just after a couple of days the internal uh, nickel metal hydride batteries I used to have would self discharge. This has been a Cassette Master presentation. I hope you enjoyed this video. Oh,